more uh, with more insight with, with their own techniques. Of okay. course, we're going to do it modular, DIY, easy to do, and all, all, all of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like uh, as I told you, I'm I'm here. You know, like uh, if, if we're doing this. Yeah. So yeah, let's do it. Let's let's hear it. Let's let's do that, and then tomorrow focus on the core which is exploring the economics ergonomics and the details of the actual build very specific this is the rosebud mm -hmm. this is exactly what it takes this is the entire cost structure and workflow that needs to be documented very well so if, say we're well say we're hiring people with instructions for wh what exactly are they doing to develop the management capacity because right now it's like we're winging everything because we're still designing and reworking things but the management capacity from comes from you have the product defined well enough that you can actually give it to somebody who can say oh, okay these are all this it's documented well enough that somebody can actually track and project manage that mm -hmm. if somebody wants to run crews right that, that's the promise that we're studying not only how to uh, build the house but if you're trying to make an enterprise out of it you're gonna have to at some point learn how to manage people crews and then people who run crews even so at the, the first step you could you know, we're working as a team. Second step, we're actually managing a team, like yeah. team of people who are building that house. And further, when we get in enough experience, mm -hmm. we're managing people who are going to be training others. Mm -hmm. And the, the, because it's all about the training part, the distributive enterprise part. So, so, well, but it's, I, yeah. I have, a, I have a slide about it. So yeah, let's let's get into your presentation, and tomorrow let's uh, let's get into the actual substance of kind of what, like how it was described in the in announcement for what the enterprise track would be. So yeah, go ahead, okay, Christian. Uh, should I connect it? Uh, I'll yeah, can you just share your screen? Share your or screen. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the enterprise session related to the CDCO home and distributive enterprise with Christian from Peru. Just, just for more reference, what, what the hard work and the future means. It's basically uh, what I envision is a spreadsheet. You've got here are all the steps, very detailed workflow st step chart uh, in a spreadsheet. We're studying videotapes. We're studying the steps. We're looking at what each each step takes in terms of time, effort, materials, costs, and we can tally that up in as much detail as possible. Because we got a lot of data on that. We've built several times. We've got tons of videotape to look at. Um, so that's that's kind of gets to the hard work. That's the 99% of the perspiration kind of deal. If you talk about the document, documenting the enterprise. Um, uh, this is on Google Docs, um, Google Meeting. So, are you uh, in there? So we're recording this for all future generations. And in the background actually for other people's reference, what's going on in Enterprise Front is we're actually getting the, the formal Department of Labor certified, GI Bill certified apprenticeship program. Uh, probably within the next two weeks, it's gonna be open to the point where GI Bill assistance is available. The way it works is that people who come here they get partial payment from the government in order to be able to do the apprenticeship and the rest of it we would have to pay a, a certain percentage of that but it's lower cost than market rate so that works as far as the other part where GI Bill for education comes in that we don't have that's where we're treated as a place where people are paying tuition <coughs> like people paid tuition for the apprenticeship or the the summer X, that kind of a print, that kind of a tuition would be paid by the government for people from ex-military for, for veterans. So that's uh, they'll take like two years to set up, from what we know. But the other part with apprenticeships, that's that's coming down the line, which means a lot of good candidates who like will have access to a lot of candidates. That's that's the good part. Um, No, 
Martin, um, do you, um, <coughs> have you seen the gaps uh, in the CD come home? Get the third one? Is there, are, are we, are we going to try and solve the design on that? Don't yeah, yeah, it starts with having a perfectly flat foundation. So the, all those errors propagate from the foundation because we did the bulk foundation. We didn't do a dedicated foundation, so it wasn't level. And when, once it's not level, you get you get those kinds of cracks. Right. So that's, um, uh, by the way, we how we do it in terms of the quality <laughs> control and the foundation, that will address that. So that's definitely something that, uh, that wouldn't be like a real build. That's, that's, we let it go because people are just learning. But yeah. in a real build, that you can't do that. The, the, the were the, the word that with lining up the sides on the CD cone too, though, right? Yeah, there were. There were. We learned some things on that too. So how do you think we can improve? Well, we we re reworked the the concept of the of the bottom rail, the basically the structural insulated panel concept with the tabs, which we still have to clear up a little bit. But basically, you're fitting everything in a way where um, starting with a good foundation, like that foundation was pretty good, but we got into a lot of issues with um, the softness of the edge and and the panels not aligning well, um, which was. That's something we, we worked out some of it in terms of not having all that house wrap, um, cl clear access, yeah, okay. like all that, all is those it, little details. Do you think it's still it out. from incremental housing without the? I mean, do you think like the, does the house wrap detract from the incremental housing aspect? Um, in terms of like say, you know, say I want to pop out the door, does the house wrap being around the whole thing will that negatively affect that? No, because we're cutting out at, around the doors still. So you can slip through it. The doors, the modules like the doors, for example, they have, in our case, I guess they have two layers of the, right, do they? Uh, two layers of house wrap? Well, at least the windows did, because the windows we had to, we had to pre-wire them in, um, pre-do the windows when we ins installed them. So we did the house wrap again after that, but we can cut out around it. So I'm not sure how, how much that would interfere because you can replace the house wrap pretty easily. Um, so, but the way we design it, yeah, we want to make sure we, we get those details. Uh, think about that as we as we design for the expandability. So we have to consider that, and we are, uh, so, and we've got a little bit more work to do. Okay, Christian. All right, perfect. So, so my. Um, start now. So I chose IME, IME Enterprise, inspired by open source ecology um, because IME means reciprocity in the Quechua language and I feel that it's a very strong rooted concept that implies giving without asking something in return. And I, I feel that this is one of the core values I have as, as my as my business, because what I want to do is replicate the OSC model um, everywhere in the world. But first, I'm going to start in my country, in Peru. So, Any Enterprise is a for-purpose organization based on OSC's lifetime design products made from common local materials to develop and or complement sustainable livelihoods around the world. Those materials include recycled steel, aluminium, metals, plastics, organics, and ceramics. I need OSC is an educational facility where individuals can learn and produce their own products or they can buy them turnkey from the micro factory. So, what's the opportunity? Co consumers lack quality, affordable houses, and machinery. The second one is small scale manufacturers spend too much time and money developing and producing houses and machines. And sustainable use of their, their resources. Lack of ICT, information, communication and technology to develop local production and small scale adaptation capacity. So we as a, as a, as a business want to generate value uh, by giving to consumers the possibility of saving money by low production co cost that translate to low 
selling prices and high performance because our service users work hard for great product reviews in the market or in general um, great uh, productivity then uh, for small scale manufacturers using our services they save time, less time spent in R&D and production, more money, lower production costs, grow faster, means easy production plus great pr prices. That uh, ends up in more work. So our products and services, we're creating value through OSC pro product development, not only using their tools to create a sustainable livelihood, but also by selling, loaning machinery, by products and through our workshops, teach individuals how to create their, create their own. So I've uh, divided it into four machines, uh, which basically is all OSC uh, open source machinery, uh, the machine by products, food produce, and workshops. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I believe that the world needs open source technologies and being able to adapt to this new economy. I feel that, th I know that there are three billion people out there without access to basic needs, to technology that can develop their, their an alternative way of development. And for me it's so important because they've gave me so much, I've been able to travel and be part of their communities and live with them and they gave me a, a purpose in life and they taught me what's the sacredness what's what's the value of life and for me conserving nature is a third most important aspect that we need to have in mind so they live in in constant relationship with nature they are basically part of nature and they're, and we need to learn from them. At the end, every time I went there with a project or an opportunity, they had so much more to give me than I was to give them. So this is a payback. This is how I see it. So my vision is large scale. I believe that through open source, and more precisely open source ecology and all their technologies and this industrial revolution that we're forming here is something that we can scale it through the whole world and m most importantly create a digital community in which people can be closer together and develop new technologies, new products, new ways of relating and collaborating for all of us to be aligned to a much greater vision than what we all individually can do. So I chose Peru not only because I'm from there, but because of their immense di diversity, not only in the cultural side, but also in the uh, ge geographical. So I've chose five different regions in which the majority of rural communities, rural settlements are settled. So the first one is urban marginal, second one is desert coast, mountain range, rainforest, and tundra. So what I would like to do and the, the project I'm trying to think and, and, and uh, ground is how can I create seed eco homes in all of those five regions? And not just eco homes, uh, but also micro factories that can adapt to their own needs and their way, their own techniques and way of um, developing in, 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 in those regions. Apart from that, I would, um, I'm, I want, apart from that uh, CD go home, I want to give different values and options for people to adapt in their houses. For example, the biodigester, the workshop, the roof lift roof with PV systems, small induction furnace, landscape design, 
house extensions, living roof, swimming pool, aquaponic, greenhouses, and much more. So what is what I've got in all these two months I've been here. So now I understand what is it that Martin and Katarina wants to do here and how transcendental can this get by understanding the distributed marketing substitution. Which means that every standardized technology and um, production uh, tools and materials, we can replace it for open source, low cost, easy, easy to do, DIY, modular um, um, uh, products. So first, instead of using standardized cement, we can use solar cement with solar system and a heated chamber or an induction furnace. That means that with the solar systems, we can create cheap and totally green cement, which I've never seen in the market. And we can create it now with the technology we have uh, today. And the other one that I, I, I thought it was very uh, in, uh, impact, impact my life was uh, creating through waste plastic and 3D printed header heated chamber farms. In, in that way, instead of building with wood, would we could recycle waste plastic to create plastic studs and all different uh, compartments of the house, such as the panels. And, well, the hemp concrete is something new. I've, I've just learned about it. And I, I, I feel it's a great opportunity to reduce costs. And uh, well, I'm going to talk about my land in, in the north in the north part of Peru, where there's sun every day of the year, and it's a very good opportunity to create uh, a hemp farm. So I'm I'm thinking about it. It's not settled. The and well with aquaponics, hemp, solar cement, CEBs, and cement mixers we can create low-cost hempcrete that it has uh, insulation capacity and uh, resistance. Well, the, the importance about this is that we can reduce 60% of the cost and even more if we continue um, yeah, developing more, more, more technologies. So what's the educational structure I want to create here? And one of the things I've always done in my life is understanding about duplication and how I can teach people how to teach how to teach. <laughs> and that's one of the things we were just talking about. I feel that it's, it's so important to live in a simple but transcendental way. How I, as a person, can do small things that people can duplicate and can do as I do so a lot of people can collaborate into creating more complex and um, yeah, more complex uh, products and, and materials. Uh, one of the concepts I, I really like is the five-legged dog which uh, it's uh, I think the, um, the percentage is one in a million right? One in a million are, are five-legged dogs, which means that the majority of people just specialize in a single, in a single ability, but through uh, open source ecology, we want to create a different profile, a profile that has entrepreneurship, builder, open source, teacher, and collaborator. And I think that's the only way in which we can create that duplication. It's the only way in which we can transcend, them, transcend all this scarce uh, mentality into a more abundant and resilient community. 
So the other the other concept is the culture of transformation. I believe that that's very important to believe in yourself that you can be that five-legged dog, <laughs> that you can transform your life and create a much deeper purpose in your life. Okay, so this is something I've been thinking about and it's the compensation plan and the sweat equity. So there's two ways in I, I, I've seen it. So the first is give ownership stakes to stakeholders and or collaborators according to sales and working hours, which I, I think it's, uh, it's a very profound uh, way in which you can retain talent and um, yeah, like affiliate it or you know, bring it to the team. And the other is a more in, in the job. So I, I was thinking of having 500 hours of training for the people that just come, the first comers. And um, once they, they, well, this is uh, Peru price. This is a lot in Peru. So uh, like here it's, it doesn't ma uh, make much sense, but five, 500 hours for your training and then once you finish that, you start gaining $5 per hour while you still train and um, educate yourself in these new technologies. Once you get into a thousand hours, you start winning $10 and $2,000, $20 and then in 5,000 Five thousand hours. You, you. Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking about the possibility of replicating and giving a house or, or something that can compensate the, the, the help and the collaboration they've done. So, in that sense, I'm thinking of a horizontal organization, or organizational structure, in which it's not that I'm gonna um, grow vertically, but I'm gonna put the money in the people that work in the, in the organization, and so I wanna grow horizontally. I want a lot of people. I want a chaotic organization. I want a lot of people involved in it, winning not so much money, but being able to duplicate and to educate themselves into how to create this new economy. So uh, I've done a small business model, and well, basically segmentation is uh, which person am I um, focusing on? But basically, it's everyone, right? So the value proposition: it's a for-purpose organization to alter the dynamics of production and consumption, provide free access to solving technical knowledge offer a distinctive alternative to commercial supply chain, low cost DIY, high performance machinery, energy efficiency, lifetime technologies, lifetime development and collaboration. Distribution channels, I was thinking of doing kits. Well, we are all thinking about doing kits, uh, not just the house, but also the technological kits. Uh, customer relationship, try to make it on, on site and also um, digital, the three income sources, well key resources are, um, are natural and human resources, technology and open collaboration, uh, key activities, the production, distribution, educational workshops and sale of our products, key partners, OSC, regional governments, local manufacturers, distributors, logistic firms, organization working with internships and volunteers, interested in bu interested businesses. So I'm thinking about now in solving houses in Peru precisely. So there's five uh, socioeconomical segments and I want to go to the D, to the segment D, which are um, 1,900,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
so the market is big and uh, we have a good product so I, I, I'm, I'm betting on that second okay so market trends emphasis by the government on diver diversification of the industrial base away from the raw material exports I think that's a huge opportunity for us more than ever with the um, government we have now they want to industrialize rural communities they want to uh, invest a lot of money in in giving access to uh, technology and um, and uh, production capacity in, 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 in rural communities so I think that's a, a, a very good um, trend then uh, we'll need for manufacturers I think that's basically the same um, and companies that are uh, focused on this segment from three hundred dollars per month to fifteen hundred dollars and the other one is um, the other point I, I feel it's important is that seventy percent of food production come from decentralized poor rural settlements but of course the price they uh, win is minimum so I, I, I think there's a the res they have the resources but they don't have the technology so they can subsist by their own means so at the end they sell all, all their products and they tend to live a, a low quality life so competition I mean you always see enterprise more convenience and less expensive less expensive and less convenient and sustainable agriculture less convenient more expensive heavy machinery businesses and more convenient more expensive are construction businesses uh, growth strategy marketing and sales online marketing visiting experience create a local OSH uh, magazine reach out to local influencers incentive programs for uh, human resources uh, and office managers customer services dedicated customer service reps staff community message uh, boards for consumers product development collaborating uh, collaboration techniques, customer product development, consumer product advisory board to drive customer features. So startup costs. I think uh, I'm I'm gonna have to start with sixty thousand uh, dollars, so I can I can build my own micro factory and uh, household facility uh, and aquaponic with aquaponics with what I have here so yeah uh, basic advanced workshop it's gonna cost fifteen hundred dollars uh, fifteen thousand dollars then uh, workshop uh, wood tools workshop and storage living space renewable energy systems 3D printers and then we'll power cube, CV press, pulverizer, tractors, CV aquaponic greenhouses, uh, and will resulting in sixty thousand dollars. I now have uh, thirty six thousand on, on my own savings, and well, I'm gonna need the do double. I need to double it. And so I need partners or uh, a loan that I can so I can get that money. So yeah, that's a little bit about my expenses. This is not completely done. Sales, first year, second year, third year, financials. And well, and this is my locality. This is where I want to start. This is one of the first regions I wanna I wanna get into it. It's an arid, dry forest ecosystem, shrubs and uh, small trees. Uh, it's uh, one kilometer away from the beach, 30 minutes with, uh, with car to Mancora, which is one of the, uh, uh, it's a touristic site. Everybody goes there and to surf, go to the beach. It's a really nice place to be. And well, my action plan. 
So I want to start with build materials, um, help develop the induction furnace, a 3D printer with heated chamber. I need to uh, do my landscape design for my for my for my land. Uh, the free CAD on the Habitat Eco Home design, and I want to do a 10 acre irrigation system. So, where's the water coming from? Well, have we have a pipeline, and uh, there are. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, these are more my partners. There are. Uh, friends and people that are basically interested in in working with me, they are not completely uh, in, but yeah, like I'm. <coughs> we we were working and, and and talking, so so we can build something together. Well, that's the team. <laughs> nice. Funding. <laughs> <laughs> And um, well, summer. Yeah, the break even from your financial was what? The break even? Uh, 75k. No, you spent 75, right? Uh -huh. What would you break even? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it really depends. It depends. Like, I don't have the exact time, but I'm thinking on, on the second year. Okay. In the second year, yeah. What, what kind of feedback do you need from us? Well, everything. I. This is just a, a broad idea of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I've uh, I've missed a lot of things, but I think uh, I kind of got myself into a, like a, a expressed myself. So I um, I don't know. I I I want to know how can I improve first this PPT, and then uh, what do you think if it's viable? If it's not viable? What the, the the strategy and how can I create a a better product? Should I start? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Do, 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 yeah, sure. Do you want to do the the yeah. structured or oh. do you want to go with discussion? Your choice. I'll keep it short. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, specific hurdles with like technical abilities within these communities in Peru uh, for the open source tools, like the software tools? Uh, are there communities that are better? Places like breeding grounds for that. Um, like, how like big is the technical ability to like, uh, you know, internet access, laptops, uh, being able to learn new software mm -hmm. and such. Well, um, nowadays there, there. Uh, nowadays there are more uh, intercultural competence in those rural settlements, but there are there is still a huge gap that that's basically you can see it as a as an obstacle or a limitation but I see it as an opportunity okay. and I see that there they might not have the technical abilities but they have the mentality and they have the collaboration okay. mindset that and it's so hard yeah. to teach so I think that's something that uh, it's it's a um, it's 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 a very strong and um, how do you say this? It's, it's something that conviction. Yeah, will there's a strong conviction in them about having access. Getting uh, getting to that first world, yeah, uh, sort of getting getting into this 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 world, but they don't want the system. Yeah, what what the system provides. So could there be a slight resistance towards like uh, some modern things among some people, or could you present it like the way forward anyway? It's it's an alternative. It's yeah. an alternative to what they have nowadays, and I I I know that it it's gonna be much more compelling for people of young young age from 12 to uh, 24, but. While they're older, it's harder for them to believe in this kind of technologies. Mm. It's harder for them to adapt to this kind of workshop uh, workflow. But yeah, there's there's a huge opportunity because their communities are 
from 900 to 3,000 people. So maybe not all are going to be compelled, not all are going to be part of it, but I, I do believe that there are going to be a, a group that are going to are gonna be willing to work and to put the effort and to create this uh, technologies. Okay. Can we get some comments from everybody? Ron Robin, go ahead. Eric? Sure. Wes? Um, I just, I'd be excited to see more about specific business models. Um, I think you covered a lot of the technologies, and I'm sure like a lot of it's still kind of figuring things out. But specific business models, like specifically like which product you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, I think you mentioned the CDOM a bit, but I want to see like more of that. Yeah. Um, and then just a uh, presentation thing, like in general. Um, I like that you have a lot of content on each slide, mm -hmm. but not necessarily reading off everything on the slide. Like you can summarize or like use that to fall back on, but like talk about. Like you can kind of speak a little more loosely than like the slide, like have the details on it, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Question. Um, can you go to the slide on your projected revenue? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-four. 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 Twenty-four.
Can you can you hear me okay? Go ahead, absolutely. Uh, okay, so I mean, just maybe like uh, more like an idea for actually additional uh, revenue and um, uh, maybe uh, potential co collaboration. Um, like, uh, have you thought about uh, touristic angle? Uh, like, uh, mm, especially this especially uh, easier to implement when you have already. Uh, mm, seed uh, house uh, built, uh, but also uh, I think if you have uh, a location in uh, in uh, in Peru in, in like a beautiful uh, area, uh, this is an easy way to uh, get additional revenue and this can also be coupled with, with, with like uh, trainings, but it can also be just like uh, uh, regular tourism, uh, but also uh, like from what I've seen in your in your, uh, in your presentation, uh, it could uh, very easily be uh, integ integrated as an additional uh, revenue source. So uh, like, uh, like build eco houses to uh, allow for tourism for a tourism business, right? I think you covered some of that. Mm -hmm. Can you also yeah, type yeah, your like, question uh, in the chat? Uh, oh, you you already have it's like right, assets that is just bringing additional yes. uh, right. Okay. revenue, right? Okay. Thanks about that. Paul? Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Christian, for the presentation. I love the value of reciprocity in the domain uh, I need and uh, bringing together everything that we've learned so far with the aquaponics and the sea home. And, uh, my, my main question is, who's your typical customer and uh, what are the important things that you think they want from a home? We're just focusing on the home right now. Sales people, like it, 
working out mm -hmm. the kinks so that the income is coming stably rather than you just scrambling every month to either find clients or have too many clients and you can't fulfill the orders and all new businesses that rely on manufacturing anything physical have that issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marching? One product. Do, do like one thing that bootstraps it, like the house. Mm -hmm. If there's, so my question would be, is there a good market for that? Otherwise, yeah, pick one thing. Yeah, from our experience, like you'll go all over the place. It's, it's your budget, you're way under budget for what it would cost, I would say. So do one thing. Mm -hmm. You can go on a walk around the block and talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next, will you, um, were you planning primarily to do direct sales or like online, um, you know, one type of product, your customization stuff? Uh, like, like how does how does the uh, the customer interaction process work? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we're we're done. So oh. now it's free discussion. Or I mean, we're also done on time. <laughs> so, uh, Pavel. Uh, feel free to stick around. This was the main session, uh, and and chip in if you want, as well, you want. What was his question? No, he said he had a suggestion that you, since it's a, if it's a tourist area, the houses could be used to rent out. Mm -hmm. uh, as if we thought of social housing, but yeah. I mean, if it has a good view and people want to sit in program in Airbnb for two weeks, that can be excellent money. Yeah, so I think I, that was his point. We, we need to do that. Like it's for the work. Yes, yes, uh, and. <coughs> I was thinking even earlier, uh, like uh, even just having a location in a sense, in a nice um, view, like you can, uh, it's something uh, like me and my girlfriend were uh, like uh, exploring uh, earlier when we lived in Iceland. Uh, it's, there are a lot of people who are interested in this kind of uh, even like small groups trips into interesting locations and if you just have um, mm, like knowledge of where, where where to go and where to have this kind of uh, uh, trip, maybe like living in a, a camp uh, uh, like under the tents, even if the location is in, in a scenic uh, place, uh, this is a really easy uh, source of revenue at the uh, beginning. Because I guess like with manufacturing, it's a lot of like you have to put in a lot of money before you, you are uh, getting like good uh, money out. So I would think about this kind of like you know um, early source of revenue. No, he said that he is. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same point. Like it's something to explore. Uh, there's different types of groups that would love that sort of thing. Like uh, friends that want to rent a house together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel it's it's, it's very um, it's, it's 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 a good it's a good project, but it's a lot of investment. You know how much costs a uh, house. Like imagine doing a hotel. A CD call? Yeah, uh, but uh, if you focus on that product, if you if you're willing to uh, sort of bootstrap it by focus on one product, which probably should be the CD call. Mm -hmm. So you get a team together and you know how to build one. Uh, you put up two houses up on a hill. Um, you know, where people can uh, live four or five people and have some privacy uh, and good Wi-Fi. That's that's, yes. that's a business. For thing. sure, I I, I I try to combine, you know, the business with the community, and I think that's my problem. Like I I, I want to have all this tech that OOC can provide. Yeah. Because I want that all those communities have it as well. Yeah. But at the same time. I need a, a revenue model, yeah, and that's where my my cables get crossed. I think we all need to plan for fifty years ahead, and <laughs> and the first two years need to be f streamlined and focused. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Katarina and Martian speak from experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're gonna change the world, but uh, it's gonna take some years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that the the, the, the thing. People, people used to do this by either mining Bitcoin or by playing the, what you call it, the online stock market. The stock market? Yeah, but the, 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 the small one, not the, you know what I'm talking about? Gambling? <coughs> day trading? Yeah, day trading, that's the one I was looking for. Um, and that's the idea, it was like, and the people do that so it allows them a revenue stream to what they really want to do. 
And I think my suggestion is that you think in those terms, where your first two years are not yet about realizing your dream or about having a stable revenue stream that then allows you to bring in the community and help them. Mm -hmm. Because you won't be able to help them if you don't have that, if you're struggling to make ends meet and good sales. Or, and again, like hardware, actually in the past, hardware businesses that I've encountered, they have more trouble filling orders than finding clients. Mm -hmm. but Mm. You know, one of those is usually what you think happens. So maybe have a more like pragmatic approach. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's the rentals. It's some, if it's something that you think, okay, I can get this up in two years and I can make money, and then you start developing what you really want. Yeah. Maybe you have two houses and you can build a tractor. You start to rent out that, or uh, you know. I think like a well, like workshops is. And, and another thing to consider is, I, 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 you didn't mention it, but I imagine that the communities that you want to help are relatively poor, mm -hmm. right? So they're not going to be your clients. So one way is like with the Robin Hood approach, which is a tourism approach, which you, you're selling something to someone who has a, a disposable income, and then you're using that to, to help the community. But that money comes from, you know what I'm saying? But what do they have? Like they don't have money, but they have all the resources. They yeah. have the food production. They have the forests. They have the rivers, the water, the the, 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 the fishes, and so I think that's my value. That's the value I want to give them. I want to change the relationship in which they have with the with the current system. That they are paying them nothing for their product. So that's where I think that I can be a key partner because I can develop a more resilient community in which they can subsist by their own means and then open themselves to the world in a more, uh, in a better relationship. Christian, I, I like your vision. I think you can fund it, but you need to aim higher. Go for at least half a million find the right partners and spend the time to recruit the, the mm -hmm. collateral you need. I, I it's it's doable and it's easy if you yeah. polish your slides and you go out and talk to the right people. Mm -hmm. And you already started. But there's different cost structures in Peru too, is it? When it the right. Oh, yeah. to what do you mean? Things are cheaper in Peru. Yeah. yeah. So the budgeting for a US enterprise is not the same as a Peruvian enterprise? Yeah, like yeah. no, like this is this is money. But I, I, I still believe that I can put a more I want one more zero there. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I because there is there are there is money. They there use other money. people's money. And and if I can give them the possibility of having a a, a better management of their resources. Yeah. We're gonna win money, yeah, right. and not just like ecotourism or whatever. It's gonna be like, and you know those two sides of Peru too. Mm -hmm. You know the indigenous side and also mm -hmm. the people who you know who have the money. So I've got a funky question. So, what in this is different than what happened to Che Guevara? Because the his clients did not understand that they needed help. Is this the case here, or this is totally different? <laughs> he was also he got killed, but he did. But yeah, but <laughs> he did not get s the people who he was trying to help did not want his help. Yeah. Is that going to happen here, or we're we're past that? No, I think that's that's one of the of the the, the main limitations on every um, NGO, on every like organization that want to help those communities. It's it's the main problem that they they are always the outsider. They can't get in that community. And I and I I I know that I can change that. I know that I have that 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 capacity of being the inside and helping them from from the inside. That that's the most difficult part because w Western society doesn't want to live with them. Doesn't wanna have a. a, a a, a, a I could see you could have the capacity, but do they see that? Do they want your capacity? That's the other question. Because you can you can have that, you, and you can probably you you probably be good at it. But do they want it, man? I think he answered that question I've, before. I've done it. Like so I've the, been there. I've so been you've there got and it. They want it. Yeah. But I I believe that we require a stronger team. 
will require more resilient people, people with more, more, more character, more, more strength, because they are stronger than us. Like they, they are much better. The Mexicans, you know what I mean? Like put they move. Six, six uh, sixty Mexicans, and you're gonna go and ah, I'm gonna help you out. They know how to do their their, walk, their yeah. work. It's 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 hard. But yeah, yeah, I know, I know that's the main difficulty, but I do think that this is different. This is different. Like this greenhouse is is, is amazing, and they don't know these techniques how to do a a, a, a nice a, a good pond in which they can create a, a like they can they can produce fish, or or they can do a, a, a permaculture project. And there are a lot of people, that are a lot of communities nowadays that are using those technologies to create a different type of uh, alternative production. So I, I, I think that this is a, a, good, a good moment to do it. But, but yeah, that, that's, that's for a certain uh, a limitation. And it, it's because they've always, Western society has always taken advantage of this, of, of, of that relationship with them. And they go take the picture. I'm helping, blah blah, and then they leave, and mm. they they've done nothing. So so yeah, it's a thanks. Should we wrap here? Yep. And for <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So what's going to be the topic tomorrow? Holder had a topic lined up. Um, what do we want to cover tomorrow? Is there somebody else that has a topic? <laughs>